this video is for the um, advanced violins who are working on um, in book two, um, number five, number six, number eight, and number nine. But I'm not going to review with you number five because I think you guys had um, that down pat. Like I said, we're going to talk about phrasing this coming week. Um, and phrasing uh, in, a, in music, whenever you have a phrase, it's actually like a musical sentence. So when you read a book and you have paragraphs that are made up of sentences, in music we would call those phrases. And those phrases that form that paragraph would then form your whole song or your piece. Um, and we'll talk more about that and how you can think in phrases so that you play more musically. But for now, we're going to work on number six, which is D major in threes. So just a reminder that you're now in triple meter, which means you're now going to be thinking in three, not in four. So in your head, you should just think one, two, three, one, two, three, okay? Um, so let's begin uh, at the beginning in your D major in three. So you're really just playing your D major scale. Ready? One, ready, and. said that we would talk about these dotted quarter, um, sorry, dotted halves in more detail in class next week, but that dot gives any note that it's next to half of its original value, it being the note, not the dot, okay? So that dot, in this case, gives a half note, half of the half note's original value, okay? In addition to what it already is. So this sounds very confusing, right? So let's break it down. A half note is worth two beats, okay? Now the dot next to it is going to give it half of two, an extra half of two. So half of two is one. So two plus one is three. So this dotted half now has three full beats because it had two beats as a regular half note and was given an extra beat because of the dot, okay? And we'll go over the different types of notes you can have um, a dot next to and what their values would be. So just know in your mind, when you see a dotted half, you're going to be thinking one, two, three, and you're going to hold that note for the full three beats. Okay? Good. Um, you may want to go back to the beginning of this video and play that one again with me so you can really make sure you hold that dotted half for its full value. Let's go to dynamic contrasts. Now when we review dynamics, we have to know that we have a couple different ones, right? We have forte, which is that F at the very beginning, meaning loud. But then as we gradually get quieter, we get to a piano, okay? So you have that hairpin looking sign, right? Which is called our day crescendo. A day crescendo just means what it looks like. You're going from a loud dynamic to a softer or more quiet dynamic, okay? So let's begin that one. Um, and you'll see at the very end, actually, you have the opposite. You have a crescendo, which means you're now going to from, get from quiet to loud, okay? So let's play together. Maybe listen the first time so you can hear how it should sound. Ready? One, two, three. Now, not only do we have dynamics, but we also have what's called a tie. And if you look at the very top where it says E review at the top of your page, you can see that a tie looks like a slur, but instead of being between two different notes um, or two pitches, two different pitches, sorry, it's now between one note of the same pitch. So in this case, at the very end of your dynamic contrast, you have the note D. So you have that dotted half, which is worth three beats, tied over to a quarter note. So in this case, it's worth four full beats because you have three from the dotted quarter, sorry, three from the dotted half, and one from the regular quarter, okay? Awesome. Let's try that one one more time. Give me your best forte. One, ready, and two, three. Now, if you're playing louder than me, then you probably aren't playing at the dynamics that are written. So try to follow my tempo. I know that one wasn't necessarily assigned to you, but I think you could do it this week. Okay? And I'll post another video for 8 and 9.